Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Draw Control Podcast. On today's episode, I'm joined by freshmen on the John Hopkins women's lacrosse team, Regan O'Brien. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Regan, and how's everything going? No, thank you. I'm just so grateful and appreciative to be on the podcast today. Um, I'm so happy that you reached out. I'm very excited to talk to you. Well, I'm excited to have you on as well. And uh, how has your summer been going so far since the season ended a few months ago? And uh, do you have any fun plans, whether it's cross related or not? My summer has been going so like so well. Um, I've been doing my fair share of hanging out with my family, working out, working, and definitely having a great summer so far. Currently, I'm training for the U19 U.S. Um, women's lacrosse tryout, um, which is July 7th to July 9th, which I'm very excited and very nervous about, but I'm very grateful I have the opportunity to have been selected and to represent my college and my hometown at tryouts, and I'm very excited. That's so awesome. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> have you ever done any USA lacrosse stuff before this? Yes. Um, I tried out for the U18 selection team, um, but that was, I think, two years ago. Um, but I think I'm at a very different stage in my career now, so I'm very excited to see how tryouts will go. Well, I wish you best of luck with that. That sounds like Thank a lot you. of fun. I appreciate and it. I guess in regards to training uh, for next season, what do you hope to work on? What do you, I guess, hope, what do you want to improve on the most in your game heading into next season? And yeah. are you hoping to work on that throughout the off season and obviously during this camp with uh, USA lacrosse? Well, I have a great trainer at home. His name's Matt. Um, I work out with him almost three or four times a week. And I work with him to work on my endurance, my speed, overall my strength. And I hope that will correlate um, to my playing on the field. I hope to become faster between both 30 yard lines and increase my endurance to be able to run those 30 yard lines um, multiple times and be able to carry the ball up with confidence and strength and poise and be very um, a big threat on the field. And just by doing that, by working very hard this summer on the wall with my stick or with my trainer and playing any lacrosse opportunities I can get. So I'm just very excited to see if it will work, but I think it will work um, this upcoming season. Well, I sort of want to transition now and talk about the beginning of your career and sort of work all the way up to where you are today. Uh, so from doing the research I did on yourself, it says you're from uh, Charlestown, Massachusetts. So talk about growing up there and how did you start playing uh, lacrosse? Well, um, I'm a Charlestown native, born and raised. Um, I'm so grateful. I know um, this is my home. It's everything I ever hoped my childhood would be. Everyone that surrounds me is pretty much my best friend. I know all my neighbors. It's a great experience knowing every single person around you. My town is one square mile, so it's very hard to forget a face, and it's very fun meeting new people when they come to town. But Charlestown Lacrosse is where I originally got my start. Um, I followed my sister, who followed my cousin, um, and I put a stick in my hand when I was in the second grade, and I fell in love. I It was a small local program back then, but now it's this booming business, and it's a great way for kids in my neighborhood to get involved with the community, and I'm just so grateful that I was a part of it. Did you watch any of lacrosse growing up? And if so, who were some teams and players that you admired? I watched a lot of lacrosse growing up. I think I was um, one of the smallest girls there wandering around the big national championships. I would have to say Zoe Stugenberg, who definitely isn't talked about a lot, um, is one of the most underrated players that I've ever watched in my entire life. Um, she was a great midfielder for the University of Maryland, and she was one woman that is able to balance her medical career alongside lacrosse. And that was just a person that I was so happy to look up to and just see thrive in her life, both academically and athletically. And her on the field was just an inspiration to watch. Well, like you mentioned, you grew up in a small town. However, however, before college, you played for a pretty big high school in Boston Latin. Uh, just talk about your lacrosse experience uh, with Boston Latin and what you took away from your high school lacrosse experience. Well, I have an older sister who also attends Johns Hopkins University. 
Um, she's my best friend. So she's only one grade older than me. And I got to play five years. Well, I was supposed to play five years for with COVID um, with my older sister. And we, I stepped on to my sister was like, we're trying out. And I was like, we're trying out. So seventh grade year, she was in eighth grade at the time. I was 12 years old. And we were given the opportunity um, to try out for the varsity team in seventh grade because our high school works in some unique way. And I was 12 and I was so excited to be out there and I ended up making the team. And ever since then, I've Boston Latin School lacrosse has been a dream. It has been an amazing experience. I've made the bestest of friends. Um, they're all they're still my best friends. Um I just think it's a great opportunity um, to grow the sport of lacrosse in a, in a community, in a school where athletics weren't always a main priority. And I was able to help um, bring attention to the school and to learn from all these people that I've met in my journey and just become the person I am today. What's like the best memory you have from Boston Latin? I would have to say one of our bus rides home um, it would have to be after a loss, which is definitely something that not a lot of people talk about. Um, but we were all on the bus ride home, headed to the sports banquet, and we were all together. We were a family. And that's when I first learned what family outside of my own family really felt like. And we were all together. We were all listening to music and laughing on the bus. And it was a memory that's going to stick with me my whole life because I truly felt at home and I felt excited to be there and just very happy that I was surrounded by the people that I love the most. So, yeah. That's pretty awesome. I feel like most bus rides for me after a loss were pretty quiet. So that's good <laughs> that you get to have enjoyable experience after those. Mm -hmm. It was How our last one. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Even I remember we lost our last game of the season. I played hockey growing up. Mm -hmm. We lost in overtime to lose the championship game. And that was like the quietest bus ride I remember back home. And you can like hear the tires hitting the highway, like sort of that noise. And that's all I just remember on that bus ride. It was pretty quiet, but uh, that's good that you got to enjoy that experience with your team. And I think it really helped having good culture, I think is something that you remember more than uh, some of the wins and losses that you have, at least in my opinion. Mm -hmm, definitely. We'll just talk about how your high school lacrosse experience with Boston Latin helped prepare you for college lacrosse with John Hopkins. Uh, it made me competitive. I think that playing with the girls that I played with, they were all kinds of athletes, some lacrosse athletes, some not athletes, and it learned to work with a different type of person every day. And I learned how to become a competitive athlete, become a d diverse athlete. I think it also gave me the opportunity um, to learn things each day, um, just out there and just learn to become a better player and work with a team, work with a different group every single day, work with the adversity that we were faced with and just work together. And I think that really helped me in college because coming in as a freshman, you're you're scared and you're very nervous. And it just, if you work together as a team, there's no, nothing better than that. Well, talk about your recruiting process with John Hopkins and what made you want to go there versus other schools you might have looked at. Obviously, like you mentioned, your older sister plays there, so that definitely was a factor. But mm -hmm. was there other stuff that made you like the university that made you want to go there? Yes. Um, mostly when I was going through my recruiting process, my family and I talked about it on lengths about my sister. And while my sister was a small factor, it definitely wasn't my main factor of attending the university. I think that when I first went to campus, um, that's where the national championships is mostly held. And I first went to campus and I was so excited and I stepped on campus and I was like, wow, this could feel like home. And I went there through several years of my life. I was going to the national championship or in a major event there. And then finally, my recruiting process rolled around and I had honestly no clue where I wanted to go. Um, and then I talked to the team and I went to campus again. And I actually really thought about seeing myself there. And I was told at a young age, if I couldn't play lacrosse for one day 
and I got hurt the second I got there, would I still want to be at that university? And my answer was yes. It was the team. It was the school. It was a way that I could balance my academics and athletics. I just was able to combine all things I loved at a school that I loved. And I'm so very grateful that I made the decision to go to Johns Hopkins. I do want to ask you what it's like playing with your older sister, because that's something you don't really see too often in collegiate sports. It's very rare, actually. Uh, What's it like uh, having an older sister on the team? What's sort of the dynamic between you guys? And uh, how awesome is it to sort of have a role model a year above you? Definitely. Um, She's, like I said before, she's my best friend. But on the field, we're just teammates like everyone else. Um, but I feel like my sister and I have always said this thing, like we have telepathy with each other. Like she can throw a ball into the middle and somehow I managed to come out with it and vice versa. And it's just an amazing, I can't really describe it because it's so amazing that I got to share this experience with my older sister. Um, there's definitely their ups and downs um, in terms of we play the same position. So it's definitely hard um, just playing against and fighting for a spot on the team with your sister. But at the end of the day, we will always be sisters. So I'm just, she's a great role model, a great player. And just, it's great. It's so exciting to play with her. Yeah, what was sort of the biggest adjustment you had to make to college lacrosse with the speed of the game, the physicality, and how'd you sort of adjust to that? I think a lot of my teammates will laugh about this, but for me, it would be staying in the frame. Um, What I mean by that is treating the game with more poise and treating the game with more composure instead of just going balls to the wall every five seconds to chase a girl out of the 30 yard, past the 30 yard line out of the 12 meter when really there's no purpose and it's um, not a great use of anyone's talents, let alone just anyone's talents. Um, but it would be able just the ability to stay focused on my girl, to stay focused on the play and to be in the moment and be aware of helping my teammates out and be aware of everything going on around me and not stay so single sighted, um, to just my girl and what she is doing. So definitely that has been a big adjustment and the shot clocks, definitely the shot clocks. Now, you play in the Big Ten, arguably probably the best conference in women's college lacrosse. I think it was showed this past year with Northwestern winning the national championship. Uh, What's it like playing in that conference and just the competition you face every game? Put it bluntly, it is insane. Um, It is honestly so hard, but so fun at the same time. Playing at the top level and against these great girls that you've grown up watching is just amazing. And just the ability to play a new team that's great every single weekend or every single week. It's just, I couldn't name a way to get better other than playing these teams, like the teams we play. And each team that we play is a different team in their own way. And it challenges us every, every single day to get better. Now, your team this past season started the year very up and down, uh, but down the stretch, you guys beat some really good ranked opponents in Michigan and Penn State before being upset by Rutgers in the Big Ten playoffs. Uh, So my question is, what was your team's mindset heading into the tournament after sort of a very crazy regular season and Big Ten playoffs as well? Yes, that loss was definitely disappointing. We were hoping to make it further into the Big Ten tournament. We had high hopes Um, coming off the season that we did. Um, The mindset that I think a large majority, if not the entire team had, was we get to. It's something that we repeat to ourselves almost every single day is we get to have another day. We get to go out on this field. We get to have another day with our teammates, with our best friends, with our coaches, and we get to play the sport that we love. And just having that mindset and just being very excited to take the tournament by storm and just be able to go on this next adventure with all of our teammates and our closest friends and prove to everyone that we deserve to be in the tournament and that we deserve to um, beat the teams that we had, had beaten in the season and that we deserved everything that we received this season. And obviously you guys won your first tournament game uh, against UMass. Uh, talk about uh, that win and what it meant for your team and just your perspective on uh, that entire game. Well, 
the vibes were definitely electric. Um, it was a great win. I think it was a great win, not by the score. The score didn't matter to us that much. It just mattered that everything was finally clicking. We were working together. We were doing what we did every single day at practice, just implemented in a game setting. And we just finally were putting all the pieces together and coming together as one to show everyone and to show ourselves that we actually could do it. And I think that the positive mindset that we all had going in to the game and into the tournament was just very uh, like a sense of excitement and of all the opportunities that we could eventually see. And I think that in terms of after the game is very exciting and we were very happy to move on to the next round to play Syracuse, but it was very, very, very like exciting and electric. Do you think that could be a building step uh, for your program next year to sort of win a tournament game? Cause you sort of know what it takes to do that. Cause obviously I feel like when you're playing in the tournament, it's much more high stakes. So the pressure just elevates itself even more. And it just, until you are a part of it, you don't realize how much of a factor that is. So mm -hmm. I'm curious, sort of that experience of you guys winning in that sort of environment, do you think that's going to be beneficial for your team heading into next season? I think that it would be beneficial because we have tournament experience, but at the same time, something that our team prides ourselves on every single day is a game day. Practice is a game day. We get to go out on the field for 60 minutes, um, 90 minutes, two hours even, um, every single day at practice, a game day in the lift in the weight room game day and being on in the tournament level, we want to get to the standard and in UMass in Syracuse, we got to the standard of every day is a game day, the days before the days after every day is something that we've worked towards to keep the same and to keep one thing, the same one controllable. And it was a game day. And I think that that mindset will help us into the tournament next year, hopefully. Now, unfortunately, your team and your season came to an end against Syracuse, uh, losing to them in the tournament. How have you sort of reflected on that loss and what did you take away from your team's uh, performance overall last year or this past year? I think we had our fair share of ups and downs, like you mentioned previously, um, but we did it together. And I think that's something that's very important because we were able to work together in order to got, get the wins and losses that we received. And I think that we won together as a team and we lost together as a team. And it's something that we learned uh, how to grow from and how to re rebound off of. And I think that losing to Syracuse is a hard loss, but it's just even more um, motivation to go into the season swinging next year. So we're very excited to see what opportunities the next season brings. What are your team's goals and expectations for next year? Obviously, it's to win a national championship like every team, but are there other goals that are on your team's radar that fans might not be aware of? Um, just treat, I think a main one is treat every single day, like, day like a game day starting from the first day of fall ball. I think that that's something that we can work towards and create a team culture around. And I think that's going to set a great standard going into the season, the spring season. And I think just in general, I think that we need to, not we need to, but we are ready to face anything that comes at us. We had our fair share of adversity and I think that we're just ready and very excited to see what changes that our new coaching staff has brought and implement them even more into the second season with our new coaching staff. Now, obviously, we talked about the adjustments that you had to make uh, as a freshman, but what would you say was the biggest improvement you made to your game uh, since the start of your freshman year to now? Um, for me, I would definitely say just my overall awareness of the game. I think that I needed to, like I mentioned earlier, poise and composure. I think I needed to realize that I was playing in the college setting and that it wasn't little small town high school anymore. And I think that's a big adjustment that a lot of kids make that they're just thrown out there and they realize that it wasn't something that you've played it's not the same sport that you played with like all previously before high school, before college. And it's definitely a 
crazy adjustment, but it's a fun adjustment at that one. Um, but it's so exciting to learn something new. And I think for me, I just needed to learn as I went and I learn every single day. And I just think that's a big adjustment because learning something new every day is <laughs> an adjustment. So I think that's what it was for me. Now, obviously, you go to a very good school uh, with a very rigorous academic program. So I just want to ask you, like, how do you balance both lacrosse and academics? And how did you sort of manage that uh, in your first year? Well, Hopkins resources are unmatched. I can't think of another school that has the resources we do. We have pilot sessions. We have tutoring sessions. We have an academic advisor we meet with twice a week. We have a professional academic advisor we meet once we, once with a week and just anything that you need, anything academically, whether it's help with homework, a teammate will help you or they will set you up with a tutor. Just the resources and the willingness of everyone around you to help you is just incredible because you don't get that, that anywhere else. And to go to a school like Johns Hopkins, it's a very hard, rigorous schedule and all your papers have to be in on time and they have to be good papers. <laughs> Um, so it's definitely hard because you're always on the road or you're always traveling. So it's about getting that work done when it's, when it needs to be done, setting a schedule and just creating a plan that works for you. It may not work for everyone else, but creating an indiv individualized plan and just working hard. So we're now in a segment I like to call six questions that have nothing to do with lacrosse. And the goal of the segment is to sort of get to know you and your team a little bit more off the field. Uh, so my first one is, if there was a movie made about your life, uh, who would you want to play yourself and why? I would have to say um, Cameron Diaz. I am a big fan of romantic comedy movies, and Cameron Diaz has always made me laugh. So definitely a character that can make others laugh. I've never really seen any Cameron Diaz movies outside of Shrek. I need to get on that a little bit this summer. <laughs> They're they're great. I recommend. I'd say for me, the actor that I want to play myself is probably Andrew Garfield. I really like yeah. the movie The Social great. Network. I thought he did a good job in that. I feel like we look somewhat similar, so I feel like you would do a good job uh, playing myself. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is your go-to karaoke song? Um, I would say All I Ask by Adele. I think a big ballad represents my personality um and it's always something that gets everyone singing along and just feeling like a family and I think it always gets either people laughing crying or just belting their hearts out which is very a very fun karaoke song uh I thought about my answer probably down by Jay Sean I think that's oh. a very good catchy song mm -hmm. and I feel like that gets everyone in a good mood so probably that one for me yeah <laughs> Uh, what is the most underrated holiday and what is the most overrated holiday in your opinion? Well, um, I think my the most overrated holiday would have to be Valentine's Day. I think that I refer to it as a Hallmark holiday, just a way to just, I think you should express your love for someone any day, not just on one holiday. And the most underrated holiday, I would say, is Halloween. My family goes big or goes home um, with costumes, with decorations with scary spiders with butlers with anything you can think of and we always like throw a huge party and it's just absolutely legendary and I wish everyone experienced my Halloweens but definitely Halloween. How do you guys get into the Halloween spirit after you are growing up because I feel like at least for me after being an adult it's really hard to get into Halloween because my favorite part about it was the trick-or-treating and now you can't do that anymore. So it's like, and I'm not the biggest fan of getting dressed up. So I feel like, how do I, how would I get in the Halloween spirit? Because that's sort of a holiday I'm trying to enjoy more, I guess. Well, it was my grandmother that originally got me into the whole Halloween kick. Um, she was one of my best friends. She was the greatest person ever, is how I would put it. But she always made us sit outside and give candy back to the kids and just feel the sense of community. And I think just sitting out there with all the kids in their little costumes coming up to you and you're in your own costume and they're like, what are you? And you're like, I'm a witch. <laughs> and I'm just very excited. And just like the Halloween spirit just will always get to me. Valentine's Day, I don't really care about it, honestly. That's sort of my opinion on it. I don't really hate it, but I also don't love it. Definitely. Um, I'm, I don't know. Maybe it's 
when you're in a relationship versus when you're single, you feel sort of differently about that mm-hmm. holiday. I would say the most underrated holiday, in my opinion, is 4th of July. I always enjoy that one. Just sort of, you get to stay up late, see the fireworks, good barbecue. I feel like it's yeah. always a good time. So I, I, I really yeah. enjoy that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I'm very much looking forward to it. <laughs> um, next non lacrosse question is some a, a question about your team. Uh, I think you have the best style on the team, but outside of yourself, who would you say has the best style um, on John Hopkins women's lacrosse? I would have to shout out my former teammate, Madison McPherson. Um, I think she has insane style. Um, she always comes up with the coolest outfits and I'm always like, where'd you get that? And is she just has an insane sense of style. And it's definitely not me. I would be in last place. Who would be in second place? Like, I'm just um, curious about that. Second place. I would give it to our assistant coach, Dor. She always comes up with like these cool matching sweatsuits that yeah. and hats and shoes. She has a million shoes. And I just am a big fan of all the shoes she has that she tells us about. Well, it's good to it's I feel like when you have the blue jerseys, I feel like you guys have one of the better jerseys in yeah, the whole NCAA. Lucky. So it's very <laughs> good to it's very easy to sort of look good in those, in my opinion. <laughs> Uh, what is one item on your bucket list that you hope to do one day? I hope to do skydiving. Um, if I can't do my, this birthday, I will do it the next. Um, it's been a dream of mine since when I was really little. I just want the adrenaline rush and the pure excitement of jumping out of a plane. Um, people will say I'm crazy and I've received that before, but it just seems like something that I could check off a list and just be excited I did it. I could not do that. Regan, I'm sorry. I'm too scared of jumping off a plane. Um, I would think probably going, just traveling around different places mm-hmm. and sort of experiencing different cultures. That's sort of what I would like to do. I hope to continue to do, I guess, um, as I get older. So, mm-hmm. and then last non lacrosse question is uh, what's the most interesting thing you've read or seen this week? Um, the most interesting thing I've read or seen this week would definitely be I was reading about the world championship in San Diego. And I just think that it's really cool that all these teams are able to come together and lacrosse hasn't been very popular um, throughout the years. And it's just gaining more and more popularity and just reading how and seeing how many different teams come together to play the sport that I love and the sport that they love. And it's just very cool that everyone can combine and come together for a sport, just for a sport. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, probably this is such a personal answer, but the Taylor Hall trade to the Chicago Blackhawks from the Bruins, obviously a big Bruins fan. So that I thought that was pretty interesting to see how they're going to try to, uh, I guess, acquire players with more cap space this offseason. Definitely. I'm hoping. I'm hoping they re-sign Bertuzzi. I really liked him a lot during the playoff run. Mm-hmm. Well, getting back to some lacrosse questions before we end this interview, uh, first one is uh, what should be done to help grow women's lacrosse from your perspective? I think streaming. It's very important that it's on channels like ESPN, ESPN Plus. Um, Just getting in front of an audience is one of the main things because people don't see it, they don't know about it. And I think that's what's going to help grow the sport of lacrosse. Because if it's in front of someone's face and they're like, oh, I like this. This is really cool. I might look into it. I think that will only lead to more growth in the sport itself. Uh, What advice would you give younger players listening to this and what it takes to be a college lacrosse player like yourself? I would start with saying you can do it. I would start to say you need to believe in yourself and to believe in the person that you want to become. And I think that you need to want it and you need to realize the sacrifices it takes and you need to be able to accept the sacrifices and becoming a lacrosse player in college or any athlete in college is extremely hard and it's a grueling process, but the outcome is so rewarding. And I'm just so grateful I took this journey and I hope that younger athletes will too. Well, before we end this interview, do you have any shout outs you want to give to your family members, teammates, friends, and who should we have on the podcast next? I would definitely have to take thank my mom. Um, she did everything for me. She's the most amazing person, just like my grandmother was. And she just set me and helped me be the person I am today and be the lacrosse player I am today, but overall the person I am. Um, and I'm just so grateful for her. In terms of athletes, I would definitely shout out my sister. 
um, Quinlan. Um, I love her to death and um, all my teammates. I love every single one of them. I know a few may possibly be on your podcast, which they're very excited about. So shout out to them. And I'm very excited to see what this podcast holds. Yeah. Well, Wednesday, fingers crossed, we have one scheduled with one of your teammates. Mm -hmm. So we'll see how that goes. But I just want to say, Regan, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate your time. It means so much to myself. You're a great player, but also an even better person as well. So I just want to let you know that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I appreciate your time. And uh, it was great getting the chance to talk and meet with you today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this opportunity.